Nicholas Bolt, uh, whom I've known for quite a while, uh, invited me to show up here, and Jerry Berta, Russ and Jerry, both people I know, and they talked about having this wonderful little exhibit, they wanted me to be part of it, and I thought that was great. So here I am, and uh, I brought up ten major paintings, some of which are behind me. Uh, I can talk a little bit about some of them if you'd like. Uh, I tend to like to do classic automobiles. I don't do a lot of modern cars, don't do a lot of sports cars, but I tend to like the classics out of the 30s. And I like a lot of the American cars out of the 50s, although I don't have anything to represent that here. But over here in the corner, for example, is a 1934 Packard. These old classics had great long hoods, massive wheels, uh, hood ornaments that almost look like a weapon. Um, so what I try to do is I try to take a portion of the car uh, that I, I see a certain amount of beauty in, and I try to just emphasize that, exaggerate it, but really focus on that as opposed to doing the whole car. Uh, most people, when they walk up to like a 34 Packard, they might see that whole car, and it, it, it'll, it'll amaze them because they're spectacular cars. So I also see the whole car, but I also see all these wonderful parts of it, and that's what I really try to focus on. This next painting is a Lincoln Zephyr, and in this case, I saw the beauty of all this wonderful sheet metal. The fender, the hood, it's so clean, it's quite massive, uh, simple hood ornament, but I wanted to capture all the reflections and the, the color that can occur on a car like that and just focus on that beautiful form, that sculptural form. Uh, this is another Lincoln from the same era. And in this case, I showed quite a bit more of the hood, fender, but I also incorporated a large flower in the background. Somewhat surreal. Uh, I don't try to do the flowers totally realistic because I want them to be surreal, I want them to be large, colorful. And I want to be able to reflect them down into the car. Um, the c flowers are some of the most incredible things in nature. Cars are some of the most amazing things that man has produced. The combination of the two, I think, is wonderful in a painting. Duesenberg is probably my favorite car to paint. Some people in the world think it was the greatest car ever produced. There's approximately 370 Duesenbergs in existence. There were only about 470 ever produced. And what I, what I have always found fascinating about Duesenberg is that in 1929, when you bought a Duesenberg, it was the equivalent of buying maybe 40 brand new Chevrolets or Fords. That's how far out of reach that was from the average person. It just was impossible. So they tended to be very wealthy people, movie actors and everything. But today, Duesenbergs, uh, the really good ones are million, million dollar plus cars. Uh, but it is my favorite car to paint. The piece over here is a cord, a 812-1937 cord. And if any car, any American car ever built uh, would be considered a work of art as a piece of sculpture, it would be a cord, C-O-R-D. Um, very, very clean. Uh, it's one of the few cars that's ever been exhibited in the modern museum of art. The piece in the corner is an Auburn boat tail speedster. And with my design background as a professional stylist, uh, I'm, very, I'm very sensitive to design lines and forms on cars. And if you look at like this line, that's the configuration of the rear end of this Auburn boat tail speedster. And it's just a beautiful line in itself. Uh, it's just pure art, and so for me that was kind of the focal point of the painting, and I completed uh, just this rear end portion of the, um, the Auburn. So that tends to be more of an abstract painting than I typically do, but I do like doing some paintings that just show all that pure form. This piece on the easel is a pretty straightforward front view of a Duesenberg. 
Um, all Duesenbergs pretty much had that front end on them. The body shapes and the sheet metal was different on many of them, but the fronts were typically always the same. The last painting there in the corner is a Rolls Royce. It's called the Round Door Rolls Royce. Uh, the driver's door is actually a complete circle. Um, so they call it the Round Door Rolls Royce. It's a huge car. And when it's at a show, it, it tends to dominate because it's so outrageous. It's so beautiful that everybody gathers around that at the expense of all the other cars. So you can see consistently um, the one we, oh, there's two in the corner we didn't talk about. One is an Alfa Romeo with the um, windshield and the interior. And Alphas are some of the world's greatest cars. I, I recently did a painting for uh, Pebble Beach for a poster, and the Alpha I was working on was a $10 million car. Uh, so Alphas are some of the really top cars uh, in existence. The one on the right is a 2005 Jaguar XK8. Um, it happens to be my car, <laughs> but I also think as objectively as I can be that it's one of the most beautiful cars in terms of just pure, simple, elegant design. Um, it's all about form. Jaguars are very sensuous cars. And so uh, I had to do a painting for myself. So that's what that one is. But you can, you can tend to see the pattern here that I, I really do focus in on portions of a car. Uh, I, try to, I try to show people that not only is the whole car spectacular, but there are these wonderful parts of the car that are equally exciting. And I just love doing it. I can see that. <laughs> Uh, I just had a question. That yes. Just something popped into my head. So, do you paint from from uh, models? Uh, or well, that's a good question. Um, do you have access uh, to these cars? Uh, no. M most of my paint, most of these paintings take me from like six to eight weeks. They're acrylics on canvas. There's no airbrush. There's no trick stuff. There's no gimmicks. It's just pure acrylic paint, canvas, and a brush. Um, when I go to shows, I go to a lot of car shows around the country where these kinds of cars are exhibited. And I do a lot of photography. I may shoot 100 shots of one car because I need to understand all the shapes. I need to understand the details so that when I get ready to paint it, I can go ahead and create reflections. I don't paint from photographs. Um, I want my paintings to be totally unique. So I make up all the color. I make up all the reflections. Um, for example, e even in the piece right over here with the large flower in the background. Well, obviously a flower didn't exist that size. Um, so I have to understand the surface in order to, to convincingly reflect that into the surface. Um, so the photographs, the only thing they serve me is that like the hood ornament on that car, I, I need to know exactly what that hood ornament is. And I study my photographs and then, then I know what I can do with the painting once I understand the hood ornament. And that has an amber dot. Uh, uh, kind of a gold. Translucent? No, that, it's not translucent. It's, it's not kind translucent. of a gold little okay, ball like. It's, it's, uh, it's yeah, I, yeah. Okay. And so does the one alongside it. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure what, you know, what it's based on, that mm -hmm. particular hood ornament. But... Um, I think I think probably what is most unique in my work, uh, I see a lot of other painters and I like what they're doing and we all do it differently. In my case, um, I don't paint any formula uh, patterns or reflections. I try to make it all up and try to be very creative with that. Um, the side of the hood of the 34 Packard over there in the corner, not the interior, but the one to the left of it. Um, that's a large expanse of sheet metal on that, on that very large car. And I know from studying those cars that that sheet metal is not perfect. It distorts. It warps a little bit because it's almost so flat that it's not perfect. And so if there's a, a person standing there in a red outfit 
it's not going to be a mirror reflection. It's going to be a shape. Like what they throw liquid almost. Uh, it, yeah, exactly. It's going to be distorted. Yeah. And so as I'm painting, I'm thinking of things like that. I'm thinking, what would this reflection be and how can I distort it? Um, but understanding the fact that that sheet metal is not going to be perfect is the key. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't paint that like a mirror. Now, on the other hand, a chrome headlight that's on that same car is pretty perfect. And so if I'm going to do any imagery in that, it's going to have to be pretty accurate. Lot, lot, uh, art has a lot to do with observation. Uh, some artists will paint a tree. I, I give critiques uh, at arts clubs, for example, and uh, a new painter, an amateur painter, might paint a tree. And I'll say, well, there isn't a tree in the world that grows that way. You know, even though you've painted it, there just no tree will ever grow that way. Trees do not grow that way. So observation and studying your subject material is really important. And I have just looked at cars my whole life. <laughs> and so now I try to take all of that observation over all those years and I try to incorporate that into my paintings. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah.